You're listening to the TPL Cast, the official podcast of the People's League of Hell at Loose. I'm your host, Tridium. And yeah, as you may notice on this episode, we have a returning co host, Hercules. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, community? Welcome back to TPL Cast, the only podcast where you can hear two grown men get excited about virtual warfare. How you doing, Tridium? <laughs> doing pretty well, doing pretty well. So yeah, Hercules and I kind of talked a little bit about it and, um, you know, because Hercules has been such a good co-host in the past, uh, we decided to, you know, enter, in, enter into some negotiations, got lawyers involved and finally, you know, we were able to, able to work out a contract for Hercules. Uh, yeah, man. And I am excited about it. I am tired of freelancing for you and I'm looking forward to getting paid. Getting paid? Wait a minute. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're getting paid for this? Hey, shh. Keep it under the, keep it under wraps, man. Don't tell anybody. Okay, I'm going to have to speak to my representation. <laughs> Bring those lawyers back in. We need to rework this contract. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, well, uh, at least in the meantime, uh, for this episode, um, we're going to get into a little bit of league news. Then we're going to cover the uh, round one results for the finals. And next, we're going to have a little preview for round two. And uh, we've got an interview with KRRC later on in the episode, and Hercules has a little surprise for us uh, dealing with merch. So that's pretty exciting. You want to get into the uh, league news, Herc? Yeah, man. TPL, the server, is almost at 900 members. That is exciting to me. I remember when we started out, we had 30. Uh, I remember when we got excited to, to get 100, and now we're, 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 I think we actually just crossed over 900 uh, yesterday, uh, but there's, you know, there's always that little number fluctuation, so it, it'll it cross over by a couple and then come back under, but we're, we're right there at that edge, man. I'm excited about it. Uh, listen, if you're listening to this and you're not in the server, check out discord.gg slash T-P-L-O-H-L-L. Link will be in the description. Let's get in on the action. Get in that server. See what's going on. That is crazy. Almost 900 members. It's come so far. Yeah, man. It has grown. It has grown a lot. I'd, I'd, I'd hesitate to say that it's kind of starting to become a uh, like a clan hub, a central community for the Hell Let Loose um, community uh, as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, it's been really interesting to see kind of what it's become and and how how people are using the TPL Discord, um, and I think the greatest part is that overall it's it's um, it's kept a pretty positive vibe for the most part. I mean, you know, there are there are um, dust ups here and there, but that's just that's just normal clan stuff, you know. Yeah, well, any any server that's got nine hundred plus members in it, there, there's going to be some disagreements. Um, and there's been a couple of times where, uh, you know, some of the moderators of the community have had to step in and say, like, hey, take it to the DMs. But for the most part, we have a pretty peaceful community, and I'm really proud of it. It's awesome to see. Yeah. Uh, in further news, uh, we previously had a league official, Harry Bear Arms. Um, he has resigned that position due to changing clans. Uh, I don't remember which clan he went to, uh, but I believe that clan already had a, an official representative. Um, so he he resigned that position. Indeed, he uh, he switched over to the first. That's what it was. Yep. Um, and we all know that uh, currently the first official representative is uh, General Reaper. So. Yeah, Harry Bear Arms went ahead and resigned that position. I just want to put one more call out. I know we uh, kind of, you know, talked a little bit about this in the previous episode, but I want to put another call out there for uh, league officials. You know, kind of like what we talked about in the previous episode, legal, league officials is super important for the league. Um, it's how we ensure that the, the rules are uh, enforced in an unbiased manner. So if your clan doesn't have a league official, you know, consider putting somebody up for it. Yeah, always good to have. Always good to have members who are um, well formulated in their thoughts to to be able to take that position and, and and really make unbiased decisions with with the rest of the team. Important as always. Yeah. Moving on to the next one, finals are live, and we've already had the first match 
of the finals, the finals round one. We'll go into that in a little bit. Be excited. And further on that, season, regist- uh, season two registration is open. Um, don't forget, everybody has to re-register. If you haven't already and you want to participate in season two and you have participated in season one, you still have to, still have to re-register. Uh, the registration tickets are season specific, so I do need to see that, uh, that registration. Um, reserves um, was previously Hirelings. We've changed that name because I think we all agreed that Hirelings was stupid. <laughs> um, we did go ahead and change that name to Reserves. We also need you guys to register. Um, we are working on putting together a TPL Lite. Uh, if you are a Reserve Clan, um, I encourage you to participate that. Um, to participate in that. Anyone who participates in light will automatically be registered as reserves to the main season uh, so it's definitely uh, definitely something we want to get clans involved in help bolster those clan numbers so that they can move into the main season nice. um, and with the main season in mind let's keep in mind if you are registering for season two and you did not complete the group round of season one you will have to complete a qualifier match um, Tridium, you want to go into the qualifier match for a second? Yeah, the uh, so the qualifier match, really, we're, we're just looking for um, some proof that you're able to field at least 30 members. Um, one of the issues that uh, we had in, in Season 1 is just, you know, some people having... It turned out some, some teams had some issues uh, fielding that many, and so... Um, you know, we're, we just put this qualifier in match just to try and help alleviate that and uh, make sure that we had as few dropouts as possible. Yeah, and uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's going to definitely mitigate some of that, uh, some of the issues that we had at the beginning of season one. Hoping to not see those issues in season two. I said it before. We all know what we're expecting now. We see what's happened. We see what we need to do. So hopefully we'll have less of the less of those issues and with that man i think that's all of the league news that i i have uh do you have anything else that i'm missing uh nope nothing for me let's uh let's get on into the uh round one results oh yeah man i've been looking forward to these exciting exciting results oh yeah oh yeah so uh first match to talk about is kind of uh interesting um we had merc versus 83 ar uh that one wound up uh being forfeited by 83 AR. So Merc Merc moves on. Um and uh yeah, I don't know, man. Merc's Merc's journey this season has been really I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you'd call it would you call it lucky or would uh, maybe it's unfortunate. I mean it kind of sucks for Merc because they haven't played a whole lot of games, but uh I think it's a little bit of both. Speaking from um from a KRRC member standpoint at uh the buy sucked. We went eight to nine weeks without a competitive match, yeah. and w- we we lost some mojo. Uh, it's taken us a, you know, we're having to put in extra time to to practice and and, and get those those moves back. Um, I imagine that Merck is probably facing some of that same stuff, uh, not having a match for that long, and you know, it's 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 pretty detrimental. But at the same point, they're they're moving on in the finals. Um, right. It's it's su- extremely unfortunate that a 83 ar uh, forfeited that round i i really thought that they were going to be able to change their strategy and uh, move forward in the finals i'm not sure i'm not sure what happened to cause them to forfeit but i think it might have been uh, due to numbers or possibly time commitments mm-hmm. uh, which we can all understand we're we're all adults we all have lives outside of this i get it uh, but it is unfortunate to see um for 83 ar but for merc they're moving on so Let's see. Let's see what happens. Who are they moving on to face? Uh, I believe WRTB, if I'm not mistaken. All right, that'll be a fun match. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> pretty interesting to see their their uh, their progression in the in the season. Like uh, like one of my clan members, uh, Padre, likes to say, "Mark is uh, Mark are clan killers, man." Everybody that they're uh, supposed to go up against just uh, you know folds or pulls out. <laughs> oh that's uh that's funny i hadn't even thought about that uh but yeah they they everybody they go against is pulled out yeah. so maybe <laughs> right right um so with with that match though uh burke was expected to win um 
So we had a poll. 78% of the people who were polled picked Burke for the win. Um, so I don't know. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll never know what, what, what would actually happen, but uh, Merck is moving on. They are moving on, and uh, I hope that we see 83RR sometime in the future, uh, maybe for season two, maybe for season three. Uh, but let's see, let's see what the community thinks when they come back, uh, come back strong. Next up, uh, we had first versus 504D slash SUGT. They played uh, a match on St. Mary uh, It was a warfare match, and the first one, three to two in that one. Yeah, and it looks like the community was kind of expecting that. 86% of those. Um, that voted in the poll picked the first to win. Yep, that was a uh, a, a, a pretty good match. Um, I was in that match, and uh, you know, I, I got to say, I, I really enjoyed playing against Five Hundred Four D and SUDT this season. Uh, I feel like they really put up a good fight, and uh, we were pretty evenly matched with them. We struggled over the middle point that entire game. So yeah, it, it turned out to be a really good game. Uh, Caparzo has a, a summary video of that match. Uh, that'll be linked in the episode description. And then I also recorded uh, my perspective of that match. So I have the full match video in the description as well. Yeah. And I heard that that was not only a slug fest, but as you said, it was an enjoyable slug fest. Um, 504D and SUDT have put up an extremely good fight. Um, I said it before. I'll say it again. They're the only coalition that's made it to the end and super proud that that coalition was able to stay together and uh, do do the wonders that they have. They've put up a great competition. I'm looking forward to seeing some things happen. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if that's going to happen with 504D. I do believe that uh, after that round one finals match was completed, uh, they informed us that they're they're not going to continue that coalition with SUT, SUDT. So um, maybe they'll coalition in the future. Maybe they'll go at it alone. Who knows? That's unfortunate. I, I, I hope we see them in a future season. Me too. Uh, next up, we had HLLE versus Void. They played a warfare match on Kursk, and HLLE won 5-0. to zero. So with the uh, poll, 69% of those that voted picked HLLE. So good, good job, community. It seems like the community has a, <laughs> so far, has a pretty good pulse on who's going to... Uh, to win these matches. Yeah, it's almost like they got a crystal ball, and <laughs> I want to know who's got it, because I need to know the lottery numbers for next week. Uh, all right, and finally, we have uh, TFMC versus 50A. They played a warfare match on Hurricane Forest, which is, I mean, I, I love that map. That would have been a good game. Oh, uh, TFMC, I'm glad somebody likes that map. <laughs> TFMC won 5-0, to zero, and... Uh, this this poll uh, had TFMC winning 96%. I think we talked a little bit about this in the previous episode, but yeah, 50A was a huge underdog. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with 50A just doesn't have the members in the server um, to, to kind of defend themselves, to kind of make their make their strength known. Um, but from what we've seen from 50A, they've done a they've done a great job. Um, I definitely I. I mean, I would have said they were a pretty even matchup from from the performance that I've seen from both of them. But the community, 96% in favor of TFMC, man. That is pretty, pretty significant. Definitely. Um, so for that match, uh, Frank has his own video recap, uh, which is linked in the description. And uh, something new we're trying with this episode, um, Frank was also able to do a post-match interview with both teams. You want to hear that, Herc? Hey, man, I do. Do you have it? Uh, do you have it uh, somewhere where you can you can put it on real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me put it on. Let's uh, let's take a listen to that post match interview. Hello, CPL podcast listeners. This is Frankie Boy, and I'm just reporting to you back after the uh, the final match between TFMC and 50A. I'm going to introduce the boys. I've got Hotta Hotta. From uh, 50A. And Hotta, would you like to tell us how to actually say the name of your clan? The um, name of the clan is uh, 50, so it's uh, 50 Division de Infanteria. 50 Infantry Division. That is absolutely fantastic. And um, we've also got Braz from TFMC. Braz, I'm going to get you to repeat 50A's name if you can. Uh, yeah, it's 50A. 
<laughs> we've got Forrest from TFMC, we've got Toby Drew from TFMC, and we've got the Mighty Drakey from TFMC as well. Boys, it was an absolutely cracker of a match. T, uh, the TPL doesn't stop letting us down. I'm going to start with uh, the Mighty Forrest, the GOAT. Mate, what did you think of the match overall? Yeah, mate, it was very competitive. It was a good game. It was good, a good map too to do it on. Yep, absolutely agreed. It was uh, Herc and Forrest. I dare say my video will be already up by now, so I don't think we're putting out any spoilers there. Um, Herc and Forrest, not fun to see pop up sometimes, in my opinion. Braz, what did you think of the match? Yeah, like Forrest said, um, very competitive. A um, lot of back and forth, especially on that second to last point. It was very spicy on both ends. Um, made it interesting as well, being ninth, uh, which is another little element to it as well, which I quite enjoyed. So, yeah. Very, very, very good match. Uh, Hotter, I tell you what, every time that I thought the match was going to start just steamrolling towards TFMC, you boys kept coming back at us. Tell me about your perspective of the match, because that's something our viewers won't get to see. It was a great game, Sweetie Bombs, till the end. Um, we had a lot of problems with the, with the connection, you know, a lot of connection issues. Actually, it was a point in the game, we were taking out a garrison and uh, pointing at a panther, and eight or ten boys suddenly lost connection that was really near the end of the match but besides that it was a great great game uh, really enjoyed that yeah i agree with you the ping i was um i was the worst probably of tfmc i was hitting about 340 on average toby how did you go uh with ping and how did you think of the match overall yeah no it was um good good to be able to play on a asian server um, it's always a bit tough when we're versing the Americans, playing them on their home ground, not try and find a middle ground. So it was good to, um, to yeah, get onto an Asian server. But the um, the match was great. Every time we thought we had them, they just seemed to pull it back at the last second and, you know, take out a Gary or take out a tank at a crucial moment. So, yeah, it was really competitive. Yeah, 100%. It was always back and forth. Every time, like I said, every time I'd say to Joshi, yeah, we're on the roll, we can get back on attack now. If there's something had come back, nah, we're back on defence, boys. We're back on defence. Um, Drakey, what were you up to in the match? I was just kicking rocks back at their artillery, mate. Bloody, yeah. It was actually went, did something different this game and went spotter just because we were missing a bloke and was still guiding me tanks in white chat. And i got to give big props to the defence on that third last point, was it, Braz? That they almost capped, that you guys almost capped back. Uh, second last Jordan. point, that was. Yeah, second last point. Yeah, big props to our defense, and I'll give big props to um get the dog and Dev. They lost Beerage, and they still pushed that last point really hard and won us the game. Two man tank crew, and they still had the best score in the game. So, did TFMC lose some boys during the match? Yeah, mate, we lost about five or six. Was it, fellas? He's recall. Oh, no, mate, we lost Taha, we lost Johnny, we lost, yeah, we lost heaps as well. But that, that's how T, T17 is at the moment. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Yoda, Yoda, you weren't the only one to lose, boys. So, <laughs> it's the bloody connection. I, I can't imagine. Yeah, can't imagine. yeah. Uh, hotter, hotter, we'll get you uh, so you can go and enjoy the rest of your beautiful day in um, sunny Spain. Uh, any highlights of the match for you? Um... Nothing special. It was a great game. Um, as I said, Sweetie Bombs uh, all the time. It was a, a really, really a great game. I, I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. No, thank, thank you, you, mate. Thank you, mate. And um, I'll just say, I think I'll say on behalf of all of the boys here and everyone else that's listening in, 50A have been an absolute class act all season. We know it's hard, especially where you're connecting from, mate, and you guys have never once had any big complaints or caused any fuss, so... Uh, congratulations on a fantastic season. Will we see you next season in TPL Season 2? Yeah, of course. We're going to see you in Season 2. Good stuff. Can't wait. And I'm sure I'm sure these TFMC boys will be looking forward uh, to seeing you out there. Absolutely. Yeah, beautiful. That's cool. 100%. All right. Any highlights? Braz, uh, you were on defense, weren't you, today? Yeah, certainly was. Um, I think we managed to get to the center point quite quickly, which is good for us because we're normally a little bit slow sometimes. So that was real nice. Got there nice and quick. Capped it, established the garrisons. Um, they did test us on the south there, but we responded quite well. Uh, and then when we came to advancing uh, due to our attack squads and tanks, we managed to move up quite nicely and again get a lovely hold up as well. They did have us on the ropes uh, almost. We managed to pull it back. So a great hold. 
yeah, but just our communications was great. Our garrison placement was good. And our response times were great as well. So I'm quite happy all around. Yeah, great. I saw you a few times marshalling your troops. You do a fantastic job. Hey, Forrest, you were on attack today. Is that right? No, I was defending, actually. Uh, I didn't know Braz was defending. I didn't see him there all game. But anyways, that's news. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> out of the norm. Yeah, that's it. No, I was on defence, mate. Um, I was mainly holding that on Siegfried line. I was holding that southwest. They were pushing really hard there. As soon as we took that first cap, they were, that's where they were coming from. Um, yeah, that was their main push. What was the hardest moment of the match? Were you there pretty much the whole time at Siegfried line? Yeah, no, I just waited until we took Kale Trail, and then I pushed after that. But, um, yeah, Siegfried, so they are coming from that south-southwest. And um, that's where their main push was. And then we just got them out. And then we'll sweet after that. Then we kept on pushing. Yeah, nice. Tobes, what were you up to before we um, start wrapping things up? Kicking rocks. Uh, no, I was running a um, running a tank crew with the uh, the majestical Don, Don, Sin- Don Syndrome. Yeah, Don Syndrome. The um, accredited team killer all over Facebook. I did. Uh, I did hear Don had a special moment. Got himself kicked before the match started. Uh, how'd, how'd you go in the tank? <laughs> yeah, no, we did really, really well. Um, the uh, TFMC, you know, coordinating their tank and infantry pushes is, you know, coming a long way. We had probably two or three awesome tank and infantry pushes. If you're looking at the map at those key, key times. Um, there was one bad cap when they almost capped the Cal Trail office, which stopped it in its tracks. But, yeah, we just coordinated our tank pushes and went in really well. So, yeah, it was my kind of highlights. Definitely. I'm going to try and get it in the video. You guys pushed, I think, was at the last point. You guys tell me if I'm wrong, but you had three tanks pushing there at one point and it made such a massive difference. Yeah. Two Panzer twos yeah, and a Panther. Different. Yeah. Um, look, overall, fantastic match. Let's go with the GOAT, Forrest. Tell me, next round, you've got the 11th. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it should be a tough game. It's always a tough game against them, as you know. Um, and it'll be great to play on our servers. for uh, So no excuses for anyone. And it'll be good time as well. We can pick our time. So, yeah, that's different for a change. Um, but, yeah, it should be a tough one, mate. So hopefully we can get the job done against them. Bloody oath. OG Derby. I'm looking forward to it. You guys always put on a f***ing good show. Oh, I swore again. Sorry. Um, no, we're not going to talk about the fact that 11th have lost some players. Let's wrap up with a quick fire round. Toby Drew, let's say this is the um, this is the question for all of you boys to wrap this up. You're in a pub match. None of the boys are online. You're thinking about getting off, but a map pops up. and You just think, I have to play this map. What is it? Ah, uh, Karen Tan, 100%. Uh, yeah, Braz, that was you as well. Yep, 100%, mate. Love that map. Drakey? Phil, Hill 400, mate, then you don't have to put put up with armour. Oh. And Drakey? <laughs> foil, Kurt. Foil, Kurt. Any good tank, Mac, actually, as long as it's not hurt again, Forest or Hill 400. <laughs> uh, all right, boys. Job done. Have a lovely evening. Guess what I'm going to do right now? You're going to set up that match with um, Rat? Oh, he's having a big... Hey, I tell you what, boys, I told this bloke we'd be finished in five minutes. We've taken ten. But that's what the Aussies do. We double things up and make things better. Uh, that's it. Job done. Boom. I'll see you later. All right, folks. There you have it. We told him five minutes. He took ten. Oh, well. That's what they do. We look forward to hearing some more post-match interviews from Frank the Tank. Uh, hope to get some more frontline journalists in on that action. Maybe we can even convince Caparzo from the Tough Hombres uh, to to do a post-match interview on their nat- next match. What do you think about that, Tridium? That would be great. I, I would love to see more of these uh, uh, frontline journalists uh, doing these po- post-match interviews and uh, you know, just hearing from the actual teams about kind of what happened in these matches and get their perspective on um, what went well, what didn't, that sort of thing. And there's something also to be said about a fresh perspective and then a perspective that you, you know, you have time to ruminate on. It's nice to get that fresh perspective uh, to see some things that uh, maybe they don't remember later on. So uh, definitely take a look at that, uh, that link in the description for that match that uh, T- TFMC had versus 50A. Frank the Tank was there, did the post-match interview. Looking forward to hearing some more. There you go. You give him an inch, he takes a mile. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he does. Um, he'll probably do it again in the future. Let's just be prepared. That's right. Hey, uh, all right. So you want to give us a uh, preview round two? Yeah. All right. Moving into the round two preview. 
Uh, we have KRRC versus HLLE. Uh, we did go ahead and put up some community polls uh, to kind of hear what the community thinks about uh, who's going to come out in the quarterfinals as the victors. Uh, what, do, what do we have on this uh, KRRC versus HLLE poll? So for this poll, uh, it was incredibly close. This is actually the closest poll. I mean, this is as close as the poll could get. Um, 51% for KRRC, 49% for HLLE. So this, this is going to be an That's interesting pretty one. pretty close. Yeah, this, this, this is <laughs> yeah, going to be an interesting I one. I think it will. Uh, from what I heard, I haven't played HLLE personally yet, uh, but from what I hear, they've put up a hell of a fight. I know that this is going to be another one of those matches to be exhausting from start to finish. Oh, yeah. uh, the community sees that as well. I think that's why it's such a close vote. Um, it, it's just going to be... There's. I don't think there's any way to tell who the victor is going to be beforehand. Um, I know who I'm rooting for, but I know that both teams are going to put up a hell of a fight. Um, oh, yeah. Moving on to the next match for the quarterfinals, we have TFMC versus 11th. Uh, now, these two clans, they are kind of both in the same... Same little region there, and from what I understand, it'll be the first match that they've had uh, versus a home team clan, um, or a, you know, a home location clan, uh, for the whole f first season. So I think they're both really excited, uh, and this is another one of those close polls that we had. Uh, I think 54% voted for the 11th, and 46% voted for TFMC. Uh, it's pretty close, not the closest that we've had. Uh, I think that one before takes the cake for that, but uh, still very, very close. Yeah, basically a toss up. Uh, and I, I, I know both of these teams are going to be excited about uh, being able to play on, I would assume, Australian servers, but you know, whatever, whatever region is best for them. Um, because I know it's been kind of difficult for, for the Australian teams uh, this season because, you know, time zones and regions and everything. Um, but this is this is going to be a great match to give them both the best chance to have the um, the most competitive match that they can. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know that they're going to be able to do their own, their you know their the best time for all of them because they're all kind of in the same general location. And that's kind of what we're trying to accomplish with season two being put into regional divisions. Hopefully, we're going to see some prime time play from the Australians and the New Zealanders and and you know hopefully uh, hopefully it'll just go a little bit smoother. Oh yeah. Looking forward to that. All right, moving on to the next matchup. We've got 7th versus 1st. You're in 1st, right, Tridian? I, tell us a little bit more. I am, what do you think is going to happen? Well, I can tell you what the community thinks is going to happen. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> community has the 1st as a an extreme underdog here. Um 68% voted for the 7th to win and 32% for the 1st. Um, one thing I know for sure is that the, the seventh is, uh, they're a legit team. Uh, they are very tough to beat. And I think that this game is going to be incredibly tough. Yeah, I believe it too. You'll hear it a little bit later in the interview guys. Uh, but KRRC just recently had a friendly match against the seventh and it was brutal. Uh, the seventh have, they have stepped up. Uh, I know they've always been kind of considered to be one of the better teams uh but recently from what they are dominating the field somebody needs to stop them <laughs> all right and moving on to the last matchup for the quarterfinals we have merc versus wrtv we mentioned this a little bit earlier ago uh merc was able to move on uh due to the forfeit from 83 ar uh, but i don't think they're going to have uh that that ability in the quarterfinals, I think they're going to face a, a hell of a matchup. Community thinks so too. That's right. Yeah the uh, the poll has fifty seven percent for Merck, forty three percent for WRTB. Interesting results, especially because of some uh, you know small rumors going around. But um, you know, fully expect uh, WRTB to to put up a fight there. Yeah, man. And I I'm going to say that I was pretty shocked with these uh, community results. Uh, simply because for as long as that I've been hearing about WRTB, they've, you know, it's always been pretty good. Uh, a lot of people don't think so. I think they're a pretty solid team. Um, they've put up a hell of a fight, um, as have many others, but they've they've done it really well. And I, I was pretty pretty shocked to see the results in favor of Merck. I'm not saying Merck's a, an inferior, but I just know that uh, the community for WRTB has had attention uh, than Merck and has generally been considered to be one of the better clans. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think uh, as far as the season goes, not not to speak about Merck outside of TPL, but as far as the season goes, Merck is kind of untested. You know what I mean? I do. I do. It's going to be interesting to see uh, see what happens in this matchup because I think WRTB has played um, almost every match. Yeah, I believe so. But for the most part, I think that uh, I think that WRTB has been a little bit more tested than Merck. Um, we're going to see what happens uh, coming up in in these quarterfinals. Absolutely, should be exciting. Uh, next up, we've got uh, an interview with KRRC. That's uh, that's your client, isn't it? Yeah, I've been I've been hanging out with KRRC. I've been pretty happy <laughs> with uh, with the people and uh, the community that they've developed. Um, TPL is my priority, uh, but I've really enjoyed the the community there. Um, great team to participate in. Great strategies. Great people. Um, one of the one of the people that I particularly enjoy playing with is Caparzo from from the Tough Hombres. I think we're about to bring him on in a second. So uh, looking forward to see what he's got to say. That's right. Uh, Caparzo is with uh, KRC, and he's also one of our frontline journalists. Maybe you've seen some of his videos. And if you haven't, you need to check it out. So let's go ahead and uh, get into his interview now. Well, thank you for uh, taking the time to sit down with us, Caparzo, and uh, do this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Happy to be here. It's good to have you on. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Caparzo. Good to hear from you, man. Uh, We are happy to have you here on the podcast. So I, I got, got, got a couple questions for you. Um, just some, I guess, more biographical. How long ago did KRRC start and, and you know, what, what kind of led to its formation? Sure. So, I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not uh, El Capitan over here, but uh, that, that would go to uh, <laughs> Easy. But um, as I understand it, uh, Easy created the KRC back in um, October of 21. So that's right when Hell Let Loose released on console. Yeah, I was about to um, say that's right about the time it came out for us. Yeah, yeah. As 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 w- from what I could, I, I had asked him the same question because you know that I I'm I love an origin story. Um, so uh, he told me that he had always followed the game when it was on PC, and uh, when he heard it was coming to console, it always kind of piqued his interest so much so that he um, decided to create a, a Discord server and, um, you know, for, for groups of people to, that are like-minded, that want to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. And, uh, you know, th- what foresight by, by him to kind of see what the game could have been and before he even had the opportunity to sit down and play it once. So um, I, I didn't come into the fold until a couple months later when uh, I think... A lot of people say, you know, they 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 pick up the game. I know I picked it up for free on uh, PlayStation Plus when it was uh, like the game of the month. Yep, I shout out it. PlayStation Plus. Yeah, shout out. Man, yeah, man, all y'all got this on PlayStation Plus. I had to buy it. <laughs> Eight hundred <laughs> hours for free. What what a to, bargain. To be fair, I would have bought it. I would have paid double and have been fucking happy with it. <laughs> oh, I, easily, easily. I I would have. I think I've I've sunk enough hours to make it worth it but i think uh, the i mean the true story is i opened it up the first time i you know this is a couple weeks into getting my ps5 right and i start playing it i say this game sucks i delete it and (laughs) one of my (laughs) one of my friends um says hey you know we should you should give it a shot with me like it could be fun i was like nah dude i already played it it sucks like it's a running simulator it's terrible and uh he's like all right now give it a shot yeah yeah so i give it another shot with him and i kind of start to see where the allure is and like how it can be good and you know a great game um so but it's only fun when you're playing with people so if he wasn't around and you know the few people that i knew that played the game weren't around I was running around in a micless squad trying to do something, and you know you don't have people that are pulling the same direction as you. So that's when a a, a Reddit post about um, the KRC on the Hell Let Loose Reddit um, kind of piqued my interest, and uh, it's it's you know the rest is history, as I guess they say. 
How excited are you guys, uh, as KRRC, uh, how excited is KRRC to be participating in the finals? Well, I think uh, I could speak for, for a lot of the guys when we say that we're really excited to, to have made it here. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we, we're all just big fans of Hell Let Loose and, uh, and strategy and kind of being the best that, team that we can be. So um, to come from just a whole bunch of random strangers joining one community around a game to honing those uh, skills and, and, and uh, strategies that we've come to implement and see it all kind of pay off to where we're in a league now and um, in the finals and in the playoff bracket, I should say, um, is really great to see. Yeah, I, uh, I know that you guys had a lot of buys during the group season. Uh, uh, for me, it would have affected me a lot. How did that affect you guys as, as a whole? Well, you know, like like I said previously, like we we all just w love to play Hell Out Loose at, at the end of the day. So um, I, I could speak for myself when I say that uh, I didn't like him. You know, the more weekends that I get to be, uh, play Hell Let Loose with all my my good friends that I've uh, I've made through this game and, um, you know, in a community that I really enjoy the better. But uh, obviously it doesn't always work out like that. So when dealing with it, it's it. it kind of is twofold you you have an element where some people say that it's a good thing that they were able to um maybe spend more time with their families or you know time away from the game where otherwise they might have gotten burnt out but then you have people uh like i mentioned earlier where you just want to play hell out loose you want to stay sharp and you want to play against good teams so um the missing out on that is is disappointing but uh at the end of the day you uh you play who's on your schedule and uh if no one's on your schedule you can't play them so uh not much you could do about that yeah i know that uh, it was super unfortunate that we had those dropouts that we we did uh, nobody wanted to see it unfortunately uh those teams just couldn't couldn't do it uh, i think some of them had some number issues uh i know that i know that it was a sore spot for a lot um what sort of what sort of effect did the weeks off have on the morale of the team? Um, I, I know that you said that that you didn't necessarily like it very much, um, but uh, like, what was the general coming coming back off of it, coming back into the playoffs? What's what's the morale of the team? Well, I I could say that morale pro isn't really something that we've ever had an issue with in KRC. I mean, no one likes to lose, and no one likes to you know win by default, even. But at the same time, I think most of the Hell Let Loose community are in the older demographic of gamers, you know, where you're 25 plus and you have a job, maybe you have a wife and kids and you understand that things don't always work out as planned. So um, we know that maybe people consider us like a t that we're a team to beat in, in the first seed because of these buys. But um, I think that that only kind of feeds the frustration of having the buys because we would like just as much as anyone else to to play and prove that we deserve to be ranked, I suppose, where we are. And uh, it gives us more opportunities to to evolve in um, how we play things because it's not a static game. And even across a, a season of competitive play, strategies evolve from from start to end i mean people are playing the game differently than they are in their group stage week one than they are in the first round of the bracket or even the end of the group stage it's just the strategies evolve new strategies are implemented by other teams other teams try to kind of borrow from that and then work on strategies against it it's a constant you know arms race between offensive strategies and defensive strategies and um to bring it back to the question with with morale, the inability to kind of practice those those things throughout the season did hurt morale. But I think overall, um, we feel confident in, in our abilities and uh, um, we're doing everything we can to kind of prepare for the finals. Well, hey, man, speaking of strategies, I got to ask how how you coped with developing strategies over the season? Uh, I'm sure that new strategies have been implemented. Uh, how did the team accept those strategies and uh, how did they put them to use? So I, I think KRC, were, uh, I'm fortunate to be, um, you know, a member and to um, 
be with a bunch of guys who are respectful of others' ideas. And if someone, we have a really great ability to to kind of come together. And if someone was thinking of an idea that we want to workshop, bring it to the to the uh, competitive group. Let's let's hear your idea. Let's kind of do a little devil's advocate, point out the the issues and and make it better. And that's kind of where most of the strat the strategic implementation implementation comes from. But um, it's it's a lot a lot of um, organic sort of uh, inventive ideas that that our guys come up with, and then implementing is difficult during a season when you're playing competitively and the games matter. But I think that that's the the great thing about friendlies is um, you can jump in against another organized team and kind of try out these things and see if they work, see if they don't, and kind of have an idea of where you can do better and uh, maybe where the merits of certain strategies lie. So, um, and then just from from my perspective as, you know, I, I consider myself, again, very lucky in the position that I get to be in within the People's League and um, to kind of join in on these games and to see how other teams like to um, handle certain elements of the game, whether it be attacking or or redeploying and, um, to see a lot of the things that are shared between all different clans. It's, it's very interesting to see how the game has kind of gotten standardized in certain elements and those little differences that each team do kind of add up to the big picture and, and can make the difference between a win and a loss. Yeah, I know it definitely makes a difference. Uh, what have you guys been doing to prepare for the finals? Do you have you have you been working on any specific strategies? I'm not asking you to give your playbook away, but uh, I mean, how how how's that how's that been working out for you guys, especially with the buys? Yeah, I mean, like I said, with with friendlies, it's definitely an ability to kind of one try out new things. But um, I think the uh, the real value of friendlies is kind of bringing in new guys into the fold. You know taking those guys who are maybe newer to the server or newer to the game even and kind of giving them that that trial by fire where like this is hell let loose like this is what the game when it's played by a hundred people can be like and um sometimes you see people thrive in those situations and i think that that makes the whole clan and the community better uh overall so i think that that's with friendlies a bit is a big thing that we've done to kind of stay sharp. Um, one thing that I enjoy, and I think uh, Hercules, you probably enjoyed this when we've done this in the past is, is doing the, the civil war type of games where, you know, you just pile in a whole bunch of your own guys on either side. And uh, I, I don't think anything's more fun than getting into a, a battle with, with your your buddy on the other team and going back and forth between the victim and the nemesis and uh, posting those screenshots and having a great time about that. But um, obviously you want to play tough games because all too often, you know, you get one or two squads of a of a clan in the game. And before you know it, you're not playing very many people at all on the other team. Um, and what's what's the good of practicing against that? Yeah, and it kind of leads to a steamroll most of the time when that happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's good for for having a good time and you know having you know having a laugh with your with your buddies. But uh, anything strategic and uh, meaningful is really lost at that point. I think uh, I think steamrolls are not the not the most enjoyable time. <laughs> no, they are not. Uh, but all that does bring me onto my next little question here. Uh, speaking of organizing, uh, practicing against you know, blueberries or practicing against organized clans, we have all felt the pain of trying to organize into a server. Mm. Uh, how has KRC adapted? How how difficult has it been to get organized in the competitive scene as a whole? Man, I mean, I don't think you'll find anyone in the community that thinks that we're in a great spot now. Um, you know, I think we make it work despite the system um, rather than having any sort of ability to to kind of have agency over how these sorts of things go. Um, again, like, you know, we're, we're an older community of gamers, I think, in general. So 
not all of our time on the weekend can't necessarily be dedicated to to playing a match. And when you have a match that you've scheduled for eight o'clock, you've gauged again, 50 people, 100 people across two discord servers availability and said that this time works for them. And then, first of all, you can't get into a server at that time, despite searching, you know, a half hour, 15 minutes earlier. I mean, I, when I was doing the match um, with the first against uh, that the the coalition last week with with Tritium in the match, I think we had like a 9 p.m. start, um, and I don't think we got into a match and a, a warfare at least until I, maybe 10:30, and that's fine on a Friday night. Like you know, I I allow that. I understand that that can happen, but. For the for the guys that maybe have kids and you know they they don't necessarily have that amount of time to de dedicate to something like this you know I I think we are in desperate need of of something to help us and I'm not gonna say the 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 server browser word you know I know that that's like a you know been beaten to death and <laughs> little uh, little taboo sometimes yeah no, I no, mean you just I, said it. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, we, we said we said you we opened said the, the word. can. Yeah, I mean, but but in the same vein, they did for the first time acknowledge the server browser in their most recent blog post. So, like, I guess that that that's the hope at the end of the tunnel. Um, that maybe that allows something. But if it was, if if it was a, a, uh, available to us for for to to chip in and have a you know, TPL server, or, you know, if each clan wanted to have their own server, that would go so far to, to making this game what everything it can be, because, and, and I don't want maybe a, a non-TPL, you know, player or just someone who plays Hell at Loose casually to think that that would be the end of it, because it's it wouldn't be a you know a boys club where you know only these people can play like that the server would be home for competitive play across the board if you want to hop into a good game you could know that i could jump into the tpl server and have a great game and play with people who are using the mic and and all that stuff so um you know i hope that we do get something like that um they mentioned the 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 clan tools in december on the roadmap um, I don't know what that's going to be. I, I would love to have some sort of color to that. I mean, uh, Hercules, if you, if you get it, if you get the low down, please let, let us know. But, um, <laughs> I'm certainly trying. I, I don't know what that's going to be like, but, um, you know, to, to at least have the acknowledgement of those two things, at least kind of gives me the first indication that, that, um, team 17 understands the the importance in the hell let loose ecosystem of, of clans and uh you know how far they can take the game above you know your average person who's just picking it up well speaking to the roadmap that was released recently we saw we saw a couple of different things uh i know later a couple of updates later on they plan on releasing some sort of clan system uh, i'm interested to see how that's going to affect uh, organizing the competitive scene uh, along with, I've heard some rumors about uh, releasing not a server browser, but something akin to a server browser. Uh, and I got to say, I am super stoked to hear that there's at least been some movement on that. Uh, I don't think T17 has been ignoring us. I know a lot of people do, uh, but I don't. I just don't think they are. I think they are trying to work hard to, to figure out how to make these things happen. And I know that they've faced some limitations that, uh, that have stopped them. But I really hope they figure it out. Now, we hear a lot about how it's crazy to try and hold a competitive scene without tools such as the server browser. You, you open the can, so I got I to gotta go ahead and bring this out. Uh, some have repeatedly said it's impossible, even, even though that we're coming into the Season 1 playoffs for TPL. What challenges have you guys encountered during the organization um, of, of the actual, you know, the, the clan maps, uh, working with other clan reps, trying to, to figure out these problems? Um, without the lack of tools, or with the lack of tools, my bad. <laughs> um, how, how, how have you been able to, uh, to foster an organized and, and competitive scene uh, through the work of all of the clan reps? I mean, it's, it's a ton of work to, to those guys. So, you know, I, I appreciate everything that, um, that our guys do to make this happen. I mean, I, I, 
at some point, you know, we're all just kind of along for the ride. They're the ones that are, you know, making sure that the that people have T-17s added, that we're flipping people to the other side so that we can get the other side populated. All that stuff is goes further than any of us do just by playing a warfare game. So, you know, hats off to those guys. Those they're, they're doing God's work there. Um, <laughs> I know there's been a lot of workarounds that people try to find to make it a little bit easier, but it definitely seems like everything's always against those. Yeah, those, uh, de- people de- trying to organize it. Desperation will make you try just about anything. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty tough. So like, I, I think the biggest part, like, you know, is, is the, um, above the match finding and everything like that, that we've already discussed is, is the standardization as well. Like, you know, if just let's have an example here, you're playing on Foy or Saint Marie Dumont. Both are p- permitted maps in the league. Typically, I mean, you, you got enough going against you. We can't be, you know, burning Foy and and SMDM nowadays. So those both are permitted maps. But I don't think anyone would say that a 5-0 win on Foy is more difficult than a 5-0 win on Saint Marie. It's it's completely different in terms of their difficulty, especially like the considering the points that you can get. So when when you consider that, as well as the fact that strong point captures do contribute to the season rankings, when you lose that standardization and I, and I don't want to play the same map all season long. I'm not saying that that's maybe the, the right thing to do, but I'm saying that. It, when you're, <laughs> Can when you, you imagine the amount of time that we would burn just trying to get Saint Saint Marie de Mont? Oh my God, dude! I I, I don't even want to imagine. Like I I think we <laughs> we would be like uh, game time would be spanning multiple days, and uh, you know God help us with the Australian groups too with the, with that time zone <laughs> scheduling as well. We would we would be in for in for a long one. But yeah, it's 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 just tough to kind of look at each map on a um on like a group stage level where you're saying what strong points count for captures and that contributing to the season rankings. And, you know, a 5-0 win on Foy is, is incredibly impressive, but, you know, a, a 3-2 Purple Heart Lane is just as impressive, honestly. So um, it, it's kind of hard to to have a competitive scene when you lose the standardization along with all those other, you know, things that we've talked about that are so important for a league, like having an empty server, like having people get into the game on the right teams without other people joining and then getting a bad taste in their mouth for clan culture when they're asked to leave, albeit politely. (laughs) I know, I know I see a lot of Facebook posts where people are irritated at clans because they come in and then the the blueberries just get rolled because we're trying to burn for a new match. I, I think I've even mentioned. Yeah, it. I feel bad for them too. They they deserve to ha- have fun on the game. They deserve to be able to play the game. But you know, yeah, when they just when get we're... caught in that unfortunate cycle, <laughs> <laughs> we're dealing with a lot harder stuff than them. They it's easy for them to just back out and find a new server. For we're we're fighting for our lives right now. Like at that point <laughs> in time. Oh man, uh, it's it's definitely been an interesting time uh, coming through season one. Um, I know we had the test season. You guys were a part of that. We we were able to identify a whole lot of problems during the test season. Uh, but uh, ultimately, the test season didn't count for anything because it was a, a proof of concept. We moved into season one. I know we've still had a whole lot of different issues uh, that we didn't encounter in season or the test season. Um, we've really tried hard to develop a community, and I know that all of the clans being a part of that uh, have, have have contributed to that. How how have you seen the community aspect of Hell Let Loose develop over time? Oh wow! I, I first of all, I love that question. Second of all, um, I again will will point to where I kind of sit with being with doing the independent media type of role, where I, I you know I'm lucky that I get invited by these clans to come and you know invited. I say more like I beg and they allow me to, but. Um, they <laughs> getting to to kind of play in the matches and, and slot in with with a whole bunch of people that I have never met before or maybe even talked to before. Um, but obviously we all share the same love of competitive hell let loose. And um, you know, at the by the end of the game, I I feel like we've played together our whole lives. You know, I 
when I was playing with Tritium in the in the first match at in the beginning, you know, we were I felt like we were still kind of working out each other's styles and of of like how to play, like, you know, our call out style, everything like that. But by the end of the match, I felt, you know, like we had played together a million times. And, uh, you know, you, to see that chemistry that formed so quickly in a competitive match and, um, you know, and, and to see that across all the different groups that I that I've gotten to to kind of um, play with. It's it's um, it's been really great to kind of see evolve over time. I, I'm happy to say that, like through KRC and through How Let Loose and TPL, I've met some people, you know, a lot of people that I consider to be my legitimate friends. Uh, you know, uh, obviously planning to see them in in real life and and all that kind of thing too. So I think the community around How Let Loose and um, the, the the clan community in general is, uh, you know, especially is um, great to see, and and it's a uh, what what keeps the game alive to me more than any gameplay. And I know that I've definitely made some friendships for life. I've already met a couple of people that I've been playing with. Shout out to Beastie Boy from Void. I uh, actually got to meet him. I got plans to meet up with a couple of other people. The community for me is is what does it. I wouldn't be playing this game if it wasn't for the community. Um, how how have you guys uh, as a group? How has KRRC helped to to foster? the the community feel um the, the the strong community that we've really developed around this game yeah i mean uh i think krc does does a fantastic job of how we kind of organize the community um both in a competitive sense and in a in a community sense um i think when when the whole competitive thing was kicking off uh there there was some hard discussions that were that were had um, amongst us in in KRC where it's when where do you draw the line between competitive and community and the decision we made is that we're a community first and there's no one who isn't good enough to be competitive you know all that matters is that you know you you have a a good attitude and you know you're willing to to be a, be a teammate and be a friend. So um, I think above that, just in general, um, you know, the the tough hombres, as as people maybe on you know are familiar with the channel, might might hear me say a lot is is our nickname for our our, our squad in in KRC, which is George Squad. So uh, shout out to Hot Dog and Lone and Brew and Mount and Brucifer and. Oh my God, they'll kill me if I forget J Jowsum and Q. Um, <laughs> so shout out to those guys, George for life. But I think having groups that form within the clan is better than just being a um, a whole. It doesn't make it a click. It makes you bond and and have that chemistry that translates so well to being in a match and trusting the guy next to you. And I think that that trust and community aspect goes such a long way when, when you're playing in a competitive sense as well. Yeah. And if, oh, I, understand and your, if I understand your system right, uh, I, I think it would develop a lot of cohesion between the units, yeah? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, as, as you know, Hercules, uh, Jasm is, is our in kind of the bridge between our two squads. And, and, and those familiar with the videos will, will know that, um, you know, George and Charlie squad, we kind of like run together and, uh, you know, practicing together and kind of just being all on at the same time. One makes the game way more fun. I have a blast when I'm, when I'm playing with the guys and, uh, you know, two, when, when you are in a game and you have that chemistry and you have that, sort of like playing on a first name basis with everyone. Um, it, it's, it really adds to the, the lethality of your group and, uh, you know, what you're able to accomplish. Who, uh, who decided to name the, the squad? Where, where did the name Tough Hombres come from? <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we try to keep it like um, the guidelines as we're laid out to, to avoid people coming up with some pretty out of bounds names for their squads. Um, were that it had to be based in a real life squad that existed in military, you know, whether any country really. But um, one of our our members is, uh, and our squad is very diverse. We have Canadians, Americans, uh, an Irishman, and a Mexican. So when we were looking at all, them, we were thinking stuff that fits our play style. We play like you know quick, and we try to 
you know, kind of lead the way. So um, when we saw Tough Hombres and, you know, obviously Q Baby, our, our resident uh, uh, Mexican citizen, <laughs> uh, raised that up to us. And uh, if you know Q, you, you can't say no to him. And uh, above that, it was a great name. So I think that that was the origination. And maybe it was more of a joke at first than it was serious. But I think at this point, we've really embraced the name. And, uh, uh, you know, I've had a great time with it. I mean, I, I made it my channel like sub name. So I, I really enjoy it. Awesome. Um, question about your your squads. So it sounds like in KRC, uh, and, you know, let me know if I'm getting too close to the secret sauce here. Um, no, no. It sounds like... Uh, in KRC, um, you have multiple squads that have that that have a specific roster, and maybe you. I'm guessing you all play together or something like that. Yeah, I mean, so again, you know, we're we're a pretty diverse group. You know, we have a large, you know, I'd say it's a pretty even 50-50 split between EU and, and NA in terms of uh, player base. So um, I think with that comes a certain necessity to kind of like organize yourself into groups where you play at the same hours. And um, so coming into KRC, you know, it was in the early days, of course. So um, I ended up just kind of hopping on and through just you know habit you know you jump on generally at the same time every day you're seeing sort of the same people online you you, you start to squad up with those same people and you say hey you know like we're we're playing pretty well together let's let's start a squad so you know through krc you you, you establish a squad you you know you bring people into the fold and through practicing with each other and you know kind of playing naturally with each other because you're all on at the same time you build a rapport and kind of plugging that rapport into the overall machine is easier than plugging six individuals into the machine if that makes sense so um i think part of it is just kind of a natural way that anyone makes friends and i think that doubles in terms of its um competitive advantage where you know you're you're out there with people that you've played hundreds of hours with and that's not to say that we you know malign ourselves to just playing with your six guys um you know that couldn't be further from the truth you you, you play at all hours of the day and uh, you play with different groups of people but um you know i think that only reinforces the overall bond that everyone has and uh I don't know if Hercules has other questions or not, but uh, just to kind of wrap things up on my end. Um, so when I interviewed Chin from the seventh, he said that uh, KRRC was who they wanted to play the most uh, in season one. And, you know, ideally for that final match, is it, is it kind of the same for KRRC? Uh, you, you want, you know, you're hoping to meet the seventh in the, in the final match or. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think <laughs> I think a week ago it, the answer might be a little different, but you know, uh, uh, so K so for the KRRC recently had a, a a friendly against seventh. Go ahead, Marzo. Oh, yeah, okay. like you know, so so now that everyone's in the know, yeah, it didn't go that well. Like from my perspective, I don't think I don't think anyone will be happy with how it went on the, on the KRC side. But I'll um, hand it to the seventh though; they played one oh, hell wow. of a game. Yeah. They had every approach on that middle point locked down. From the moment they took the point, we were never able to establish a foot again. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And what what are the details ahead, Julia. for this match? I'm what, sorry. What what map what what are the details for the match? What what map mode? Um, so um I, what I believe point? it was I believe it was uh Utah, right, right, Hercules, or was it was don't, it Omaha? Don't get me lying. I saw too much of the death screen to remember what <laughs> map we were on. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair, but um, it, it was uh, uh, West Verville was the midpoint, um, from what I could recall, and then uh, it was what is it, Rear Battery? Um, that's uh, over there. Hold on, if I could pull up. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Rear Battery then, and um, it uh, 
it was tough. It, I mean, books are on the north of, of the map, so it leaves you very limited in what you're able to accomplish to the north. Um, I think it was ver- the West Burville point where it's kind of, you have the church to the south, and then the main kind of stronghold to the north uh, in the middle, and then those kind of groups of houses up to the north. So it kind of gives you like a full wall of uh, where you're able to kind of set up defenses. And uh, I know from my very, very brief time just trying to probe the north there, I had maybe one or two machine gunners dedicated to that one house there, and it's just overlooking a field. So you, you, yeah. that's a pretty good trade if you can dedicate two or maybe even one guy and wipe out, you know, an entire hundred meter grid square. Um, that's an advantageous position. So um, I think it's, it was, again, Hercules hit the nail on the head that, you know, an amazing game fought by them. I mean, it was, it's been a while since we got worked like that. And uh, I was going to say, I know that Charlie, uh, Charlie squad probed the East side uh, of that center point a couple of times, and we were just shut down every time East, South, I uh, couldn't establish anything on the west because they were attacking the next point. Yeah. Uh, but it, from the start of the match, uh, we fought over that middle point for what twenty minutes, neutral territory yeah, the whole I, time. Yeah. If if I wasn't so you know like adrenaline mode, I would have paid more attention to the fact that that was probably the longest midpoint fight before it fell either way. That I might have, I think that might be the longest ever that I've played in, you know, 850 it's, hours of Hell It's the longest so, one I've played. It was intense yeah. over that middle point for a good yeah. long while. And, and I, you know, I would hope that the, the seventh would, that I'm not just kind of looking at it thinking like, oh, we were that close. Um, but I, I, I would think that the seventh would agree that whoever took that midpoint was going to have a huge, ad, uh, in the rest of that match. And, uh. It was uh, an extremely hard, hard fought match, but um, you know, again, hats off to them. That they they put in some some solid work. Um, clearly, in in um, the interim between these uh, the preseason, and you know, they they definitely have uh, some some great shots. So, uh, congrats to them. And uh, I think the bracket kind of looks like, um, assuming you know, we're able to kind of move along. Uh, that it could end up that that we we play them in the grand finals. I think that that is uh, a mathematical possibility. <laughs> the potential is definitely <laughs> there. Yeah. What was the uh, what was the score at the end of that match? Oh, it was a five zero. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we got walked back all the way. <laughs> yeah. <It wasn't laughs> once they when, once they like Caparzo said, once they took that middle point, uh, we were just never able. We were on we were on the back foot the whole time. We were never able to established that uh, that forward push they were shutting us down at every turn we made uh and eventually they broke through our defenses while we were probing theirs and that was it mm-hmm. gotcha well maybe you'll have the uh the opportunity for uh revenge i think that's as uh, the what we would hope for um in in and i think anyone would hope for is is to have an opportunity to kind of um uh prove that it was a fluke uh, maybe uh not not saying it was obviously they're they're a great team but to to kind of uh avenge your your loss and uh to be able to do it on you know potentially the biggest stage would uh i wouldn't want it any other way oh yeah does uh does pressure get to get to you at all uh i I don't think so at this point like um you know i think i think i sure you know you feel the pressure moments where you know it's a critical moment of the game. I think we all understand those five minute, you know, intervals that are, you know, you win or lose the game during them. And uh, during those moments, you, you know, you, you obviously recognize it, but I think getting, you know, panicked about it is, is the worst reaction. Um, you know, we, through playing the game uh, plenty t- uh, of hours, you kind of know, um, the right response to certain things. So you just try to, to kind of fall back into that. But, um, you know, as, a, as someone who is typically on the attack or, you know, at least likes to be, um, I kind of enjoy that, that aspect of the game and like the chaos, because I assume if I'm feeling it, that I have to imagine they are. And uh, I just got to hope that I win the gunfight. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Uh, you got any more questions, Hercules? 
Yeah, uh, yeah, just one more. I know that uh, KRRC is coming up against HLLE uh, in the mm -hmm. quarterfinals. What are your What are your thoughts on that? Are you excited for that match? Um, what kind of a challenge is is that going to present uh, you guys as a team? Yeah, I mean, it's it's I'm I'm certainly excited. I mean, more competitive hell at loose, the better for me. Um, I think that they are, are are a great team. Obviously, they they made it this far. They um, had a full schedule, and you know played through it and that find themselves in the same spot that we are. So I think, you know, from that perspective, um, I'm, you, you kind of consider the buys and like, you wish you, you had that uh, a little bit more experience, but, um, those guys are always, um, you know, looking for matches on, on TPL and, uh, getting their, their practice. in. so, you know, you gotta, you have to, treat everything um you know your, your your most serious opponent is always your next one so um you know you, you don't underestimate anyone you don't put any stock into rankings or anything like that you just um play the game the best that you can and and uh work the strategy that that you are are planning and uh you know hope that it it results in you coming out on top i'm, I'm always confident but i'm i'm never um uh, complacent. And I think that's a great mentality to have, especially with the uh, the quality, the caliber of the teams that are participating in the People's League. Uh, I think every single team offers unique and distinct challenges. Um, each one is going to have have a have a strength that it needs to follow. Um, I know that KRRC has some strengths. I know that HLLE has some strengths, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this match turns out. Uh, with that, I don't have any more questions. Do you, Tridium? Nope, that's it for me. Well, then, Caparzo, I have to say thank you very much for joining us on this. Uh, very eye-opening. Glad to get some answers uh, for some questions that we had. Uh, do you have anything to ask of us before before we let you go? Um, I don't have anything for you guys. Uh, I just want to say thank you guys for, for everything you do for the community. Hercules, you know, taking the, the steps to start this whole thing up and, and everything you do in the server and, uh, and Tritium, everything that you've done, um, you know, I know that this kind of stuff isn't the easiest thing and it's, and it's not no work. So, um, you know, you, you do a great job with it and I always tune in and listen and, uh, you know, always something good to learn. Um, so thanks for having me guys and, uh, George for life. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, Caparzo. Thanks, guys. Hey, man, that was that was a great interview. Loved hearing from Caparzo. Definitely, am glad that we got to see the standpoint of KRC uh, on the buys, the overall feel of the community, and their excitement for season two looking forward to season two and i know that they're they're really excited to finish the playoffs of season one it's going to be a tough fight uh all the way through to the end that's right that's right hopefully uh i don't know you know maybe maybe we'll get to see them and the seventh face off after all should be uh pretty exciting to see maybe so <laughs> we'll see what happens in these uh in the quarterfinals looking forward to giving these results on the next episode right so for our uh, final topic in this episode, uh, got got a little surprise that you want to share with us. I do, I do. It's something I'm super excited for. Um, we're, we've been kind of working on it in the background. Um, a few weeks ago, I shared a link. Uh, that link was to a website. That website is the site that we're working on for the People's League. We're going to be selling coffee mugs. We're going to be selling T-shirts, hoodies. You might even get some boxers or some socks. Can I buy TPL underwear? Yes. I think that will be an option. Uh, and if we do, I know I'm buying some. Oh, absolutely. I'm lounging around in some TPL boxers. <laughs> Boxers, socks, drinking a TPL coffee. Uh, even for those with kiddos, I think we're even going to be looking at uh, like baby onesies, uh, kid shirts, uh, you know, little little stuff. Um, it's not going to be like mass ordered or anything. It'll be kind of to order. Um, but we're going to take all of those profits and we're going to try to donate them to an organization that could really use our help. Um, 
the organization, it you know, it'll be different every time we make a donation, uh, but it's it's going to be something that's near and dear, probably to gamers' hearts, uh, probably something to do with uh, mental health mental health awareness for gamers, um, veterans, because of the vi- the type of video game that we play, uh, we really enjoy uh, giving to the veterans and and people who have fought for our ability to play these games. Um, we want to help those people out. Um, we will be will be withholding uh, just enough for the operations of the website and potentially any premium bots that we get to make uh, TPL as as a server run a little bit smoother. Um, but all of those all of those profits are going to be going to organizations that that could really use our help. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, possibly have some season unique items. In season one, season two. Uh, maybe maybe we can. Uh, yeah, maybe we can throw some championship shirts out to some people. Who knows? Awesome, awesome. That's uh, that's pretty huge. I definitely want some merch now. I know I'm excited about it, man. Uh, I am gonna buy a coffee mug first thing. <laughs> uh, I'm going for. Hey, you already know what I'm going for. Boxers. I'm going for boxers. <laughs> with I, I don't blame you at all. That's my. Uh, TPL match uniform right there. <laughs> every every match from here on out, boxers and socks. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Well, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing that store come to fruition. Any idea when uh, when that might take off? Or yeah, so I was just about to get into that. It's still a work in progress. We don't have any definitive timelines. Uh, we're we're all adults. Uh, we're all working outside of this wonderful project that we've put together. So. Things are taking a little bit of time, uh, but it's definitely something that we are working on on the back end. We do want to bring that forward. I, I just can't. I can't give you a timeline. I would like to say within a month, month and a half, uh, but I can't. I can't commit to that number um, entirely. Gotcha. So potentially in time for season two. I'm hoping. Well, thank you, Hercules, for coming back on and uh, co-hosting, and uh, you know, being willing to uh, be be a permanent co-host on here. I appreciate you. Hey, man, I really, I really appreciate you. You've done a lot of work on those TPL cast. Uh, a lot of people don't get to see the organization and the time and effort that you have to put in behind the scenes to edit these, organize the episodes, lay out the outlines. You do a lot of work, man. And I want to thank you on behalf of the entire community for putting these podcasts together. Uh, I know that I really enjoy them. I enjoy participating in them. I enjoy listening to the ones that I don't. Uh, I even enjoy listening to the ones I'm in because uh, it's there's there's just so much content that we go over. It's nice to, to hear it again. Um, thank you for, for doing the things that you do. The, the, the best thing for me is when people... Uh send me a message on discord or something and show me that like, you know, they send me a picture of them playing it in their car or something on their way to work or something like that. I always think that that's so cool. And that's a good time to listen to it, man. If anybody's got any time who, you know, they're, they're spent where you can listen to things. I know a lot of people listen to audiobooks. Take a minute and listen to a TPO cast. It's fun stuff. I also want to uh, give a shout out to those who, uh, have left suggestions for the podcast and for those who have taken part in the community polls. Um, thank you all very, very much for that. And of course, if anybody has any ideas or suggestions for future episodes, feel free to share them with us in uh, the TPL discord or leave a comment on uh, any of the YouTube videos for the TPL cast. Yeah, we definitely rely on these suggestions. We can't, uh, we can't always come up with the new content. Sometimes we need help from the community. Tell us what you want to hear. That's right. So that's it, man. Uh, You want to sign off? Thanks again for having me. This has been Hercules. It's been a great time. Yep, and thank you, uh, everybody, for giving a listen. Uh, This is Tritium Out.